Well, we are starting something called Evenings on the Patio. And what we would like to accomplish with this is we have both grown so much from conversations about art and talking about passion and talking about what absolutely enthralls us and why we do what we do and, and a million other things. And but truthfully, my husband, when I want to talk about all this, <laughs> just points to Liz's house and say, says, go, because he's had enough. So we're going to kind of let you be privy to the kind of conversations that we have and uh, that we've had with other artists as well, mm -hmm. many, many other artists. We are a different tribe. We are not normal. <laughs> I guess you would say that. We're normal in our own us. world, but not to everybody else. So we are sitting here at Robin's Roost. We filmed all day today. And as you can see, look at this glorious sight. Well, uh, in fact, uh, let me get up and I'll show. It's let me. unbelievable. I'm just going to take the camera and just show them the scenery. It is beautiful. Can I tell them a little bit about the cabin? Yeah, tell them a little bit about the cabin. So my dad, uh, in the 1950s, he and his friend um, bought 50 acres here in the mountains of Utah. We're, we're, um, the Wasatch Natu National Forest is right there. And so we back up to a national forest. And um, so they bought 50 acres and they took on a few more partners and they deeded it up into seven lots. And, um, and then another 50 acres became available. And so there's a total of 100 acres that we own uh, with uh, six cabins right now. There's still one lot that um, can still have a cabin. So, but we're very spread apart I can't see we can't see another cabin from where so we, private from where we sit but down below is the Weber River which you can probably hear and a lot of people from if you're not from Utah you call it the Weber uh, River but it's the Weber River and I have painted it so many times I can't even begin to tell you how many times so I I um, have such fond memories of coming up here as a little girl we had horses, so um, I had a horse named Coco, which I absolutely loved, a, a Morgan Mustang. And um, so I rode all throughout these, these woods, and my dad taught me how to fish. My dad taught me how to hunt, how to shoot a gun. I was the only girl with all brothers, so I was destined to prove to my dad that I was just as good as his son. So I made him teach me how to do everything the boys did, which is probably why I'm such a, a, I don't know what the word is, very dedicated and a go-getter. Overachiever. Like, overachiever. <laughs> <laughs> and what, I'll tell you, there are so many beautiful wild flowers up here there. And that has a lot to do with why Elizabeth paints pet flowers. Tell us the story. That's right. Well, so uh, besides, you know, horseback riding in the summer and hiking and fishing, we would snowmobile all winter long as well. But um, my grandmothers would come up here and my grandmothers loved flowers and I adored my grandmothers. I'm sure most of you have heard this story, but they would take me and we would walk along the mountain paths and, and we would pick wild flower, flowers, the wild geraniums, the Indian paintbrush, the columbine, wild asters, all kinds of different wild flowers. And then I would take them back and I would press them in a book. And then my grandmothers would help me, you know, like I would write out a name and then I would tape it to that particular page of what that flower was. And I have such fond memories of that, of those flowers and my grandmothers. And I, you know, I can, I can just testify that that's where my love of flowers has come from. Just a wonderful memory. Yeah, it, I just can't even imagine being able to come up here every year, year after year and, re and unwind when you stand up here, especially if you go down by the river and just let it totally consume your whole soul, it is the most relaxing, beautiful place ever. 
it's it's pretty nice. It's very very <laughs> special. It I, is. I spend a lot of time camping, but we didn't have a cabin or a place to go all the time. Although the Uinta Mountains that I paint all the time is really literally, as the crow flies, a half hour over the over these mountains into the pass. So it's pretty close. It, you know, to drive there would be a lot longer. But yeah. And it's absolutely gorgeous in the fall because all the aspens turn yellow. And um, y'all know that's one of my favorite colors to paint. <laughs> but so it's just spectacular. In and the, the fall. poppies. Too. Oh, the poppies. There we have, um, yeah, poppies that bloom up here. Um, and in fact, my mom's family has a cabin about a mile and a half down the road, which I spent a lot of time there as well. And there's a, there's a tremendous poppy field that is just gorgeous. And I actually was married to Jim just right over there. We were married up here. Right um, where that little prairie dog is right now. <laughs> there was, there's a lot of prairie dogs. A lot dogs. of prairie dogs we, up here. We call them pot guts because when they were target practice when I was growing up. When you shot them, their guts popped up. <laughs> I didn't touch a gun until I was 43, maybe. Maybe older than that. But, yeah, it's, it's beautiful, and it couldn't be a better place to sit out here and have art discussions. We... we filmed all day today the plein air um, film that's going to be um, shown on our site in September. And she did an incredible job. The yeah. painting. Oh, we should I show. just I simplified all of the information, which is what you have to do when you're learning how to plein air. You have to simplify. In fact, actually, not when you're beginning. It's like all the time, no matter how long you paint, how many years you painted, you have to simplify yeah. information. Well, and I and I attempted plein air um, while Shannon was filming. I set up and I, the pond where we paint is very complicated. There's a lot very. of infor a lot of information, and um, I ended up wiping mine off because it wasn't wasn't very good and. Painting next to Shanna is sometimes intimidating when it comes yeah, to Yeah, well, landscapes. back at you, honey, when I'm doing <laughs> flowers. Good Any, word. Anyway, I do, I do want to say that we've been out all day. We took a major hike, which was exhausting. In the sun, and, and it's 90 degrees. And anyway, uh, but no, no makeup. Haven't done my hair. It's We're having a lovely time, and we've been working hard, so we deserve it. Yes, we Here, do. Here, cheers. Cheers. Cheers to conversations on the patio. Evenings on the patio. You'll be seeing more of our own patios in the future, <laughs> but they're not quite as nice. They're not quite as nice as this. So I have a question, Liz. I want to know the meaning of all of your um, residue when you're painting and the debris. Debris. The debris. <laughs> My husband makes fun of her because he walks in and goes, you just got stuff everywhere. Yeah, clean that shit up. Clean that <laughs> up. But, <laughs> he says. but it has a very, very meaningful it does. idea for you. Tell us it about does. it. Well, you know, it's, it's really quite simple in the fact that all of that debris on the table um, represents basically what life is like and that life isn't perfect. Mm -hmm. And it can get pretty messy sometimes. And... Um, you know, I, I, I love it when I'm painting the roses or something and then the petals, the petals will just drop down on the ground or on the tabletop. And, you know, a lot of people would clean that up, but that's real life. That's, you know, that's what happens. And that debris to me just represents kind messes of messes we mess have to clean up. Kind of my life, the, you know, the messes I've made in my life or just the hardships that I've gone through and my goodness, we all have. Yeah. We just all have. We so, all have remnants. And there is there is beauty in that messiness. If everything is just put together perfectly, um, it just feels so stiff and it doesn't feel real. In fact, I, I had ordered a huge bouquet when I lived in Kansas. I wanted all whites and lavenders in a bouquet, in a big bouquet. And I kept saying, I want it very casual. I don't want it stiff. I don't want you know, everything in a row. I just want it really kind of messy. Well, it came perfect. Very, very perfect. Everything was perfect. So I literally pulled everything out of the vase and kind of messed it up a little bit more. Um, Don't you think our art reflects life so much? Yes. I mean, everybody's art reflects life, yeah. whether you want it to or not, whether you are 
um, doing it intentionally or not, it all comes through who you are, what you've been through, what emotional wreckage or <laughs> joy <laughs> you've been through. It all comes out in your painting. Yeah, for sure. I know I've told everybody about my little single tree thing, but I'll just say it really quickly. I had a couple of my gallery directors take me to dinner at a show one time, and it was just after my divorce, and I was going through a really, really hard time. And they both said, okay, enough with the single trees and the stormy skies. And I'm like thinking, what are you talking about? Until I went back and looked and saw how many paintings of single trees. It was me painting me, trying to find my footing, trying to find my grounding through all the stormy skies. I think your your right. flower petals and all of all of that is part of that for you. Yeah, yeah, it is. And you know what's interesting is that painting I did recently that went to the Oil Painters of America show, Remnants. Oh, that was amazing. Um, the 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 dead sun sunflower painting. But you know what's interesting about that is. You know, you all know I grow all the flowers I paint. I I rarely, rarely do I ever go to a florist. They're all from my garden. And that's a lot of work. But I was cleaning up the sunflowers at the end of the season. And I had just grabbed a bunch. And I kind of leaned it up against my studio, which is yellow, in honor of my mom. And, you know, went and went to grab another bunch. And I turned around and I saw that light and shadow pattern. And I went, oh, ah! my gosh. <laughs> so I had to paint it. But the interesting thing is... Um, I think the American American Women Artist has recently done uh, a master artist pages on their website, AmericanWomenArtist.com or .org, and I'm a master in that organization. But anyway, she wanted some images to put on my page, so I sent her all my beautiful roses and my flowers and everything, and I just sent her remnants. Well, she chose remnants to put on the page as of course. as my you know this is what I do and I wrote to her and I said you know I think it's interesting that you chose that you know the dead flowers and she wrote back and she says she says I think it's wonderful that you find beauty even in death yeah and I you know and that's true it is true mm -hmm. and there is a life cycle to everything everything all, all four seasons and and we get that here in Utah we do get that here in Utah <laughs> And everything dies, and then there's rebirth of some sort or another. And mm -hmm. really, through this COVID, I think that it's made us all become even more aware of all of that. That for sure, life is very, very fragile. Mm -hmm. And the more we can interpret that and express that in our paintings, um, the the more expressive they are I, that piece is incredible well thank you some pieces are some of those little flowers are half alive mm -hmm. and some of them are completely gone mm -hmm. and it's the beauty and the juxtaposition of all of that that makes it so beautiful well uh, you have a huge influence in that particular painting because you were so good at seeing the abstract design which is is something that that you know i've progressed a little bit slower than you and seeing you and talking you know and filming your lessons and hearing you say it over and over and over again about the abstract design that was that painting was the light that turned on for me about seeing how all of these beautiful shapes Shannon and I went on, on a walk today and there was this <laughs> uh, it wasn't a walk it was a hike uh, there was the one um, dead pine tree and we, we have um, pine beetle here yeah. that kills the pines and it can take out a whole mountainside. But this particular tree was this rusty brown. Oh, it was it gorgeous. Was gorgeous. Gorgeous. The color was incredible. Oh, my gosh. I, it was. It was absolutely gorgeous. But I said to Shanna, I said, you know, the difference between us, our creatives and non-creatives, is that a non-creative would see that as just a dead tree. We look at it. And, and, and go, lovely. oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. The color was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I've done that. I've done many, many paintings of uh, pine beetle pines. Dead, dead pines. Yeah, and my dad working for the Forest Service would go, oh, that's just horrible. There's so many trees dying. But we do. We see something we, we so see, different. We see beauty in everything. 
And not until they die and not until there's a fire, when there's a fire, do the new trees grow um, from the pine cones. It's a cycle of life, just like the flowers, just mm -hmm. like everything. For and sure. it, it's kind of difficult to get through all those things, but what is it? Death and taxes are the only <laughs> thing that we know for sure. Right. So true. You might as well find... Okay, so it's hard to find something beautiful in taxes, but you can sure find something beautiful in all of nature. For sure. And you got to grow up feeling this, being here, yeah. listening to these noises. And... The humming. There's lots of hummingbirds around, and we'll have deer come through and moose come through. And, and what did you see here? What did, oh, a, a cinnamon color black bear. I was here with uh, a few friends. You weren't you weren't there mm -hmm. that year. Um, we were sitting on the deck, and we had taken a, a hike. And I had heard some rustling, and and um, I said, "Well, it's probably a deer or something." And they were asking about bear, and I said, "Well, there's black bear. There's no grizzly bear, but you know, we don't we don't really ever see the bear." <laughs> Just then, <laughs> the cinnamon colored black bear comes walking up from the river <laughs> there strutting his stuff and we're all looking at it going oh my god oh, i would have been in the house oh no <laughs> so um and he stood up on his hind legs and was looking at us and we were looking at him and how exciting yeah it was pretty cool but that that's not something that we get to see all the time no but it was it was pretty cool yeah. to sit there and say well we don't see bear very often and then all of a sudden the bear there comes out of the woods <laughs> and there's moose oh yeah elk deer, deer. yeah yeah it's, it's beautiful. incredible but lots we of wish you could be here with us yeah. this is the next best thing yeah that my dad has a salt lick out there so the moose and the deer will come through our front yard and just sit there and in fact a lot of times the deer or the moose will lay down um, the cow with her calf will lay down over there and rest for a while. It's really kind of fun. Have you ever seen how big a moose they're, is? They're big. <laughs> they're huge. Yeah, we got huge. a we got a big head in the cabin. <laughs> you have lots of heads. There's in lots the of cabin. heads in the cabin. My dad's an avid hunter. But I told Liz I hope they don't all come back to haunt us when we're <laughs> up here. I don't think so. But. Well, we're really glad you could join us and be part of our conversation, and we have many more to come, and we really hope that you are enjoying everything about our course. We're putting our heart and soul into it and giving you as much information as we can possibly think of, and every day, both of us will say, oh, let's do this. Let's do that. There's just not enough <laughs> hours in the day, right. but you know what I think is interesting with you and I, as much time as you and I spend together? Uh, and we probably spend more time together than you do with your I husband. Know. But we never get tired. Get tired of each other. But we never ha We are never without something to talk about. No, there's always, 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 always something. Because art is a way of life. It's yeah. not just a job. It's not just a hobby. It's an entire way of looking at life. Yeah. And we're very and it's lucky. A, it's a beautiful life. It's a beautiful life that we've created. And to that, cheers. cheers. <laughs> Thanks for being with us.